What's up you guys, I hope you're doing really good today. In this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about Web 3.0. First, we will go over what is Web 3.0, the evolution of the web, what is Web 3.0 on crypto, and its properties. Web 3.0, also known as Semantic Web or Read Write Execute, is the era from 2010 onwards that alludes to the web's future. Artificial intelligence and machine learning enable computers to analyze data in the same way that humans do, which aids in the intelligent generation and distribution of valuable content according to a user's specific needs. There are a few key distinctions between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, but decentralization is a hard or both. Web 3.0 developers rarely create and deploy apps that run on a single server or store data in a single database, usually hosted on and managed by a single cloud provider. Instead, Web 3.0 apps are built on blockchains, and the centralized networks of numerous peer-to-peer -peer nodes or a hybrid of the two, and these programs are known as decentralized apps, and you'll hear that term a lot in the Web 3.0 community. Network participants are rewarded for delivering the highest quality services to establish a stable and secure decentralized network. Web 3.0 is a possible future version of the internet based on public blockchains, a record-keeping system best known for facilitating cryptocurrency transactions. The attractiveness of 3.0 is that it's decentralized, meaning that rather than consumers accessing the internet through services mediated by companies like Google, Apple, or Facebook, individuals themselves own and govern sections of the internet. Web 3.0 doesn't require permission, which means that central authorities don't get to decide who gets access to what services, nor does it require trust, meaning that an intermediary isn't necessary for virtual transactions to occur between two or more parties. Because these agencies and intermediaries are doing most of the data collection, Web 3.0 technically protects user privacy better. Now we need to take a look at the evolution of the web. The World Wide Web is a major tool used by billions of people to exchange, read and write information and communicate with others over the internet. So if we take a look at it, Web 1.0 is the earliest version of the internet that was known and then consider Web 1.0 to be the read-only or synthetic web. Most of the participants were consent consumers while the makers were largely web developers who built websites with material delivered primarily in text or graphic format. Web 1.0 existed roughly from 1991 to 2004. If we take a look at Web 2.0, then most of us have only seen the web in its current version, often known as Web 2.0, which is also known as the interactive read, write, and social web. You don't have to be a developer to participate in the creation process in the Web 2.0 universe. Many apps are designed in such a way that anyone may become a creator. You can create through and share it with the rest of the world. You can also post a video and make it available to millions of others to watch, interact with and comment on Web 2.0, YouTube, Facebook or Instagram, even Twitter and other social media. Web technologies such as HTML5 and CSS3 and JavaScript frameworks such as ReactJS, AngularJS, Vue.js and others enable companies to develop new ideas that allow users to contribute more onto the social web. As a result, developers only need to design a mechanism to enable and engage users because Web 2.0 is built around them. If you're wondering what is Web 3.0 in crypto, when it comes to Web 3.0, you will find that cryptocurrency is frequently mentioned. And this is because many of the Web 3.0 protocols rely heavily on cryptocurrencies. Instead, it offers a monetary incentive to anyone who wishes to help create, govern, contribute to, or improve one of the projects. Web 3.0 tokens are digital assets that are associated with the vision of creating a decentralized internet. These protocols may provide various services such as computation, bandwidth, storage, identification, hosting, and other online services formerly provided by cloud providers. For instance, the Liver Peer protocol, which is based on Ethereum, provides a marketplace for video infrastructure providers and streaming applications. Similarly, Helium incentivizes consumers and small businesses to supply and confirm wireless coverage and send device data through the network using blockchains and tokens. People can earn a living by taking part in the protocol in various ways. Both technical and non-technical consumers of the service typically pay the use of the protocol. 
much like they would pay a cloud provider such as Amazon Web Services. Like many forms of decentralization, needless and frequently wasteful intermediaries are eliminated. Furthermore, Web 3.0 will rely heavily on non-fungible tokens, digital currencies, and other blockchain entities. Reddit, for example, is attempting to make Web 3.0 inroads by devising a mechanism to employ cryptocurrency tokens to allow users to essentially control pieces of the on-site communities in which they participate. The concept is that users would use community points, which they would earn by posting on a specific subreddit. The user then makes points based on how many users upvote or downvote in a particular post. So let's talk about the difference between Web 2.0 versus Web 3.0. If you take a look at this picture right here, you can tell the difference between the target reach, which for example, on Web 2.0 was a community development and on Web 3.0 means empowering individual users. Its focus is tagging and end user experience, while 3.0 user empowerment through the trust, security, and privacy. We have web applications versus smart applications. We have Web 2.0 where the network owns the data and then 3.0 where entities have ownership over the data including its ownership and use. Now what are the properties of Web 3.0? The move from Web 2.0 to 3.0 is happening slowly and unnoticed by the general public. Let's take a look at the four properties and the first one is semantic web. This is a crucial component of Web 3.0 and the phase was coined by Tim Berners-Lee to describe a web of data that machines can analyze. The primary concept is to build a knowledge spider web throughout the internet that will aid in understanding the meaning of words and generating, sharing, and connecting through search and analysis. Web 3.0 will facilitate more data communication thanks to semantic metadata. As a result, the user experience progresses to a new level of connectivity that takes advantage of all accessible data. And also the 3D graphics. Web 3.0 will transform the internet's future as it evolves from a simple two-dimensional web to a more realistic three-dimensional cyber world. Web 3.0 websites and services such as e-commerce, online games, and the real estate market make considerable use of three-dimensional design. Also, artificial intelligence and websites will be able to filter and offer the best facts to users thanks to artificial intelligence. In the current Web 2.0 era, organizations have begun to solicit customer feedback to better understand the quality of a product or asset. Then we have ubiquitous and this one refers to the concept of existing or being present in multiple places simultaneously. This feature is already available in Web 2.0, for example, Consider social media platforms such as Instagram where users take a photo with their phones and then post and distribute them online, where they become available their intellectual property. Once posted, the image becomes ubiquitous or available anywhere. Alright everyone, so that was it for today's video. If you got some valuable information out of it, please don't forget to give it a like and also leave a comment down below on what you think. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications every time we post a new video. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next one.